Welcome back to the channel guys, it's Wes the Suburban Viking. I got my buddy Dave here with me and we are with, we are from, we are Midgard Axe. So I can't help but feel like there was a higher power at play here trying to get this video done. It was recorded several times, I kept having no audio audio that echoed like I was talking through a mic in a baseball stadium. It just was weird and not common for my filming habits. Anyway, I did a video prior to this uh, giving you guys a behind the scenes look at my studio, showing you kind of like how I set things up, my audio and all that good jazz. It's not really long. And then I kind of go outside, take these out, showing you guys because these are old axes that I was going to get back to. Finally got back to them. Took outside uh, to throw these and then we got a tornado watch. The wind starts blowing. Things start getting crazy in that video. It's funny but it's got some good information in it. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to run the original video of me kind of giving you behind the scenes look at my studio. Then I'm going to show you some clips of me outside when I was throwing these with good information in it. Some funny moments where the wind's just whipping through and I'm trying to throw these. It's crazy. Then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts on these and we'll do the giveaways. Hope you guys enjoyed the CRKT Jenny Wren and how I think that maybe, maybe steel axes could be the future of throwing axes. They bring a lot more to the table in my opinion than a traditional hafted axe. Anyway, if you want to go see that video, check it out. We got some severe weather rolling in right now, uh, possible tornadoes. Um, so I'm trying to get this video done. Kind of was going around and I was like, man, I've got a lot of side projects that I've kind of left you guys hanging with. So I'm going to try to run outside and kind of catch you up on some axes that I've put to the side that I said I'd get back to, or just stains, all that good jazz. Having a look at the room here, this is kind of a... Uh, behind the scenes look of what this looks like normally. I normally have my computer up here that I take down for the videos for the intros to the reviews. Um, I've got all my axes. I kind of just lay them up on my table um, <laughs> when I'm getting ready to uh, go outside. I'll kind of just lay stuff down and go, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So stick around for this video. As you can see in the thumbnail, we're going to do two giveaways on this video. I saw some axes that I had forgot about, and I was like, oh shit, I was supposed to do those as giveaways. <laughs> I forgot, guys. I'm not kidding. I, 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 don't, I don't even think I can count how many axes I have. I'm kind of a hoarder when it comes to pew-pews, you know, pew-pews, and when it comes to uh, axes. We're going to take these out today and throw them. And then we got CRKT Jenny Wren, guys. I'm telling you, CRKT Jenny Wren. This thing's a monster. It's a baby monster. You should get one if you want to spend the money. Not telling you you should, but if I were you, I would, but that's on you. Of course, guys, we got the Rinaldi Carpenter's Axe. I'm not going to throw this one today because I'm going to do a whole other video on this. I'm going to redo the bit, and I'm going to go outside and give you my final thoughts. I've been throwing this thing off camera now for about three weeks. I do have some shorts coming up with me throwing this in the shorts. I'm not going to give it away, but uh, I'm going to make a whole video on this. I am still testing it out, but I'm to the very end, and I'll give you guys what I think about it when I'm done, but what a cool axe. What a cool axe, and that's all I'm going to say. And of course, guys, we got the Grandsforce Brook Scandinavian axe that I put the Mohawk dye, stain, whatever you want to call it, on the handle. I'm going to take this outside, too, and put some linseed oil on it and see how much transfer we get. I haven't touched it since. It's been, kind of been sitting up on my axe wall drying, so we got to get to this one, too. But um, just want to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. got my TV hung up over here. You guys don't see that. Um, kind of made a mount for it, which is kind of cool. Um, and then if you guys see in the background back there, which is kind of cool, you see that axe back there on that piece of wood? It's kind of stuck in. Uh, that's kind of a cool design I did. I, I've got axes everywhere and I got to figure out places for them. So I kind of just threw that up there on my safe. It's kind of cool. One of my safes I got, I don't know how many safes I have, but um, that's kind of cool. That goes, sits in the corner, but, and then the, my table guys, this is the table that I made that I was telling you about. I'll kind of give you a look at it here. Um, I love this table. This table is freaking awesome. Um, just a cool table. Uh, this is where I set all my stuff at. It's not perfect. It kind of slopes a little bit, but I love it. 
I think it's a cool table. I do everything up here, all my design work, um, all my research on my computer. There's a chair on the other side that I sit at, but uh, got these legs uh, from um, uh, Woodcraft in Norfolk. I've told you guys about that store already, but the legs, they're all steel legs. And then I got another piece of wood down at the bottom for kind of like a shelf for my feet or shelf or whatever. This is where the magic happens. The magic happens here. I know the lighting sucks, guys. We're going to go outside in a second, but I just kind of want to give you a, a sneak peek at what this looks like uh, when you're not, when I'm not filming. I usually have the camera like right here zoomed in. So you only see this. You don't even see the table. Um, so it's kind of cool to kind of see the back ground whenever you know you're not filming um it's kind of a smaller room um so i've got uh the axe walls behind you over here and then you have this background and then my uh viking style background which i'll show you guys real quick is right here which is pretty cool you guys can see it in the light my bath the bathroom is actually right there <laughs> but um that's kind of what it looks like during the day um, pretty cool, pretty cool. I do enjoy that background, guys. If you haven't seen any of my videos yet with that background in it, this is kind of off the cuff without the theatrical look to it, what it looks like. Um, and that is an actual real uh, horn. You can actually blow in it and make noise. I think I've done it in one video, um, but it actually is a real horn. Pretty cool. Uh, and uh, I got it from an Icelandic company who makes them. Um, but it's real and, and uh, factual horn, which is kind of cool. Um, it actually works. And then my Viking style uh, Dane axe down there, guys. That thing is so cool. I hafted that. Uh, I actually made that axe handle. And let me give you guys a sneak peek of that. I don't think I've ever shown you guys that before. Check this out. I actually made that handle for it. And then wrapped it. You know, of course I wrapped it in leather. You know, it's more of a display piece. I actually have used it before. I've gone outside and... Uh, smash wood with it before it actually works very well <laughs> but it, it's more of a display piece but it's actually functional and I actually designed that handle and then I did the finish on the handle too and gave it that uh, finish on it but um pretty cool guys pretty cool I forgot where I got the actual axe head from I don't remember where I got the axe head it was so long ago I got it off somewhere online but you know it's more of a display axe head, really. I don't think it even has any tempering on it. But it's cool. It's a cool axe head. Um, and it's a cool design, so I really like that. I don't know if it's dropped yet or not on upgrading my axe throwing channel. Um, I got a new camera. Uh, I show it in that video, which is kind of cool, and go over some other things. If you guys want to know why I'm always wearing these Reebok sweatshirts, um, the reason why I'm always wearing them in the Reebok pants is because... What I want to do is I kind of want to make, on my website, I've got a merch section. I haven't done anything with it yet. I haven't been able to find a good sweatshirt for cheap because I don't want to charge $50 and $60 for a sweatshirt. I think it's a little bit ridiculous. So I kind of wanted to find a quality sweatshirt that was nice, but I wanted to test it out. So I bought a ton of these Reebok sweatshirts. And for the price, guys, these things are great. I've been wearing them all winter, and they're great sweatshirts for the money. So I think maybe if I can get some without this huge logo, because I have two that don't have the huge Reebok logo. It's just a small one up here. If I can get some of those, I think I'm going to start making some prints of like Midgard Act stuff if you guys want to buy any. I'm going to make some so I can wear them in my videos. I think it's cool. But that's why I'm always wearing these. I've been testing them out all winter to see how well they hold up, how well they look when you wash them, because I wash them all the time to see how well the uh, color fastness stays in them. Because some sweatshirts will fade really fast, and I don't want people buying a sweatshirt and then washing it and it fading really fast. So I'm testing that too. Testing everything on these sweatshirts to see how well they hold up and see if they would be good enough uh, to sell, in my opinion. Don't know where I'm going to go to get the screen printing done for the logos on the shirts yet, but testing these out to see how well they do. I know the audio probably sucks. I don't have a microphone plugged in. I'm kind of just doing whatever. So you guys can hear me. You know, they say audio is important, but... I, People get a little crazy about some of that stuff. I understand video. If you can hear me and it's not crazy, distorted, then that should be good enough. Okay, so uh, doing things on a budget. Um, like I said in my last video, I didn't want to put a ton of money into the channel um, to start with because I didn't want to be left with all this stuff if things didn't kind of pan out. So I'm upgrading slowly, and I'm probably spending a little bit more money than I should 
in the long run, but I don't want to invest a ton of money. So I'm slowly upgrading. I got a new mic that you guys have seen in the videos. This thing sounds pretty decent for the money. It doesn't sound the greatest. I really do need to upgrade my audio uh, capabilities, especially for like these or doing stuff outside. I got to bring this out on a tripod and set it in front of the camera, but it's working better than that little wireless mic I had guys where it sounded like I was talking through a tin can. God, that sounded horrible. The things that we go back and look at our old videos and as we progress, we're like, what were we thinking? How did we think that looked good? How do we think that sounded good? New mic. This one doesn't sound the best, but it sells a, sounds a hell of a lot better than the old one did. Okay. So I got the mic and I'm just kind of showing you guys what I got and what I use. Um, here I've got a better tripod. This is the, uh, the, the own on O N N. I don't know. But this one right here is pretty robust, guys. They're fairly cheap. And this thing weighs a pretty good amount. Um, the tripod that the camera is on right now is a Sunpack Pro 66. That thing is junk. I'll just be honest with you. It's good for filming inside. I wouldn't take it outside. I've taken that thing outside before, and the camera has fell over because the wind just blows that thing over. There's no... It's very light, very compact, but inside tripod, but it's not that great. This one's pretty nice. Very robust. It breaks down. Of course, the legs come down and lock. Uh, this goes up and down. You have a tilt. And I'm also going to use this one for my new camera that I got because this one's actually really nice and it's not expensive. So I got this one. I got the one that the camera's sitting on, which is this. I'll just show you guys really quick what it looks like. The Sun Pack. That's the Sun Pack. That one right there. It's not the greatest, but I do have a magnet on the back of this phone and then it clips on here without like very hands free. So guys, I can just kind of like go like this and boom, it's on. So I do like that. It's very quick. It's very, uh, you know, tactile and on and off really quick. And it has a very good secure fit up there. Just the, uh, tripod sucks. So guys, I got a ring light. It's not, you know, it's not the best light, but it works very well for when I'm doing my background, my Viking background. I'm sitting in front of it. Um, it does extend all the way up 70 inches. It collapses down. It's 12 inch light, does all kinds of different colors. I only used a white light on it, but uh, it's pretty cool. It wasn't very expensive. I think it was like 20 or 30 bucks, but it does the job for now. You know, I do have another ring light. As you guys can see over there in the corner, I have a ring light right there. And when I do this background, there are so many lights on because it looks like crap. If I don't, these lights up here on the ceiling fan are on, okay? Then I have that light shining on my axe wall, okay? Because it kind of gets dark over there in the corner. And then, you guys don't see it, but I have one of these lights. And I have another light. So this light sits here like this. You guys don't see it in the video. It sits here like this and shines on the wall here with the ring light there. Then I take this one and this one, of course I move the computer off the desk and then this one goes right here and then shines on that wall. So all in all, I've got two lights up here, two right here, one back there. I've tried doing it without certain lights. I've tried turning this light off this is the best combo I've found so far. Uh, you can probably use filters. I haven't really found any filters that do really well with the iPhone um, without all this light. So I have to use all this light and then go back and use a filter. But uh, yeah, this is basically what the setup looks like. I don't know what happened to the initial impressions video of the CRKT Jenny Wren guys. My face, I'm just like, the ISO on that thing is all jacked up. Like, I'm just like, you can't even see any detail in my face. I'm just like a ghost, white. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with that. I'll upload videos. They look good. Two or three videos look good. And all of a sudden I'll do the same thing for a fourth video and it just looks like crap. And I don't know if it's got something to do with the way that, uh, YouTube is downscaling the videos or what, but you know, I don't know, but I try my best with filters. I, uh, edited the, uh, CRKT Jenny Wren, the final video last night. It's dropping tonight, which is Wednesday, the 3rd of April. And, um, Guys, that video, 
Oh my goodness. It took me forever to edit that video. And I was going through and trying to pick out filters because it just didn't look right. I had to put two different filters on that thing to try to get the ISO down. Um, so my face wasn't all white, but um, that took that video took a long time. It's a pretty long video. Check it out. It's got a lot of good information. So as I was filming, I'm pretty sure it's raining. We're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to check it out. No, not yet. Not yet. But uh, it's nasty. It looks nasty out here. Uh, like I said, guys, they're calling for tornadoes today. Um, I guess there was a bunch of tornadoes dropped in the Midwest, and this is the same, st the same storm that's rolling through here. Um, it does not look good out here at all. But, uh, you know, it's not raining, so keep looking at the wrong camera. Sorry. It's not raining, so um, let's just get out here and start throwing. Why not? Here's a look at the uh, German axe. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I do like that little design. Simple and easy. Just some black spray paint. It's like a pearl spray paint. And then I took some uh, a rag with ridges on it and just kind of wiped it over the head there. And that's what I got. And then we got the Ned Foss Viking style axe. Yeah, it's everybody gets some storms. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to try to throw these for you guys. And then what I'll do is maybe I'll throw them. The Throw when the wind's not blowing, and then uh, come back and talk when the wind dies down. Throw when the wind's blowing. There went that. <laughs> Let's just get into these axes real quick. I will show you guys that they're very similar. They're both Hoffman blacksmith and handles. Um, this one has a little bit more of a hook down here at the grip, where this one's more streamlined and straight at the grip. But, um, you know, I wanted to test these. They have more of a straight handle design, and uh, I thought they would make for good uh, throwers, daily throwers. All right, so let's throw these things and see what they got to offer. I've yet to throw them yet. I don't think I've thrown them. Um, but if I had to guess, I'd say that the German style axe is probably going to hit a little bit more force because the head um, feels a little heavier. But uh, let's uh, let's just throw these and see how they do. Hopefully, I don't throw them into one another. I'm gonna try to space them out a little bit. Ah, shit. We'll go to the right. <laughs> that first throw lands right in the center. Um, so I had to go to the right. I don't want to tear up the handles on the first row, but, uh, yeah, that German style axe, it's got a heftier head on it. You can feel, I don't know if you guys could hear it or not when it hit, it hit with some force. The Ned Foss axe isn't bad at all. Um, it just, it's a little bit lighter. I don't expect that paint that I put on the German style head to hold up. It's not, and it's okay. If it, if it just comes off the, uh, bit here onto the cheeks, and leaves the back part, I'm okay with that. Like I said, it's gonna be a daily thrower. I was just testing around playing with this thing because I wanted to get that god-awful orange paint off of it. And, uh, you know, it looks pretty cool, but um, let's see. Go up high. <laughs> Every time I start talking. And the target up front um has malfunctioned again i don't know what's going on with that target this one back here is way heavier i have yet to have issues with it but that one in the front i've had to do i've had to redo that target i don't know how many times everything that i use i've got buckles on that thing um that are rated for 550 pounds two of them on there and one of them is completely bent almost fall you know fallen off uh maybe it's just a force from it swinging me hitting it with axes but it's the same ones that are on this one uh, that one up there just doesn't like it. And neither does this wind. It's not like me. I'm going to try to keep these axes away from one another, guys. So, you know, I'm just testing them out. I don't have to be super accurate and stack them real close together in this. I'm just trying to get a feel for them. Wanted to come back and test them. I have yet to do it. So I figured I'd come back now and do it. I will say the only thing I'm concerned about with this handle design, with the way I did them, is the knob okay this knob down here looks like it's going to be a good knob this one down here not so much i know i did say i don't go off grain orientation and grain run out all the time i don't but i do notice stuff and i did notice that this grain orientation down here on this handle 
I'm not liking the way it looks. So if it splits at some point in time, reference this video and uh, remember that I said that I didn't like the way this knob looked if it breaks. But uh, this one looks pretty decent. But, you know, only one way to find out. Said I wasn't going to throw them close together, but sometimes you just got to, you know. <laughs> Maybe once I get some time with these axes and I enjoy them and I throw them for a while and they work and everything great. Maybe I'll test the knobs out if they hold up and see if my theory is correct that this one would probably hold up more than this one would just from the mere fact of looking at them and testing them out and saying um, I kind of want to enjoy them for a little while before I break the handles but let's go uh, left target right side of the target that targets getting eaten up in the center I don't really do anything on the left and right as you can see they're almost fully intact um, it's just the way that I cut my targets guys they're kind of rounded so if you stand here and throw at the side it can skip off you have to kind of line yourself up with the sides because they're, they're, it's not a, you know, flat surface. It kind of, it's flat in the center, but then it kind of rounds itself over. That's the only thing I don't like about it. I think when I ha hang them again, I might flip them around to get a flat, even surface across. Um, we'll see. I have yet to do that and tried that yet, but we'll see how that works out uh, when I go to replace that front one because that front one is almost done. Bullseye! Bullseye! Yeah, the axe hit weird on that left one. You gotta get around that side and throw it, because if not, I've had plenty of times been sitting here trying to hit that left bullseye from here, and it just hits and skips. Not bad throwers for single rotations. I'll take them back farther in another video, but kind of wanted to give you guys a sneak peek at these things. I hafted them and designed them and did all that and then never came back to them. So figured I'd come outside and throw them for you. They're both holding up very well. No movement on the head at all. I got no movement. The Ned Foss uh, axe, um, I have not done anything with this bit at all. Okay. And you guys saw the original video when I filmed this. This is the Viking style axe, another Viking style axe that I did a video on where the handle came all jacked up and it came loose after a few throws. Um, I threw this thing pretty good amount and I'm throwing it out here now and I have no edge rollover on it. Um, I will say that the bit profile is a little steep, but it's good enough to stick. And then the, uh, the German axe guys has got really thin cheeks here. Really thin cheeks. I actually did this right before I started filming this video. I gave it a quick edge. Um, I don't expect it probably to hold. But it's holding. I got no no chips, no gouges, no nothing in that bit. So even the quick edge, I just used a, vo a file, a Baco a fine file, and then hit it with a 250 grit whetstone just to kind of give it somewhat of an edge so I could throw it. I mean, it's pretty daggone sharp, but it's not like as sharp as I can get. But, um, you know, for a quick sharpening, this thing did fairly well uh, for the time I put into it, and it got fairly sharp with little effort. So, And the Ned Foss axes, I will say, um, I don't know what your guys' experiences are out there with Ned Foss, but the experience I have with Ned Foss, uh, their bits do very, pretty damn well. Um, you know, they're not the best bits in the world, but for the price, I don't get a lot of edge rollover. I don't get a lot of gouges in the edges breaking off or anything, and they hold their edge pretty daggone well. I mean, so, you know, is it the best axe in the world? You know, am I trying to sell you a Ned Foss axe? No, of course not. I'm just telling you that I throw a lot of these axes on a weekly, almost daily basis, so I've got a ton of time behind some of these axes, and um, I'm just giving you my experience and my opinion. Take it or leave it. Here comes the wind. Oh, oh, fucking leaf hit me in the side of the head. That hurt. I don't even think that was a leaf. I think it was a stick. I have to go back and rewind the video and watch it. <laughs> Damn you. Hey, I'm going to the right. Not bad. Not bad. They feel pretty good. They feel pretty good. I really want to take them up front and throw them at that target. I'm going to spin the camera around. We're going to throw up that wood round over there because I never put that wood round in videos. I was getting a bunch of shit for us sitting there.
I always get shit for that wood round. You're gonna hit somebody's house. Guys, you know that house is like 50, probably 40 yards away. <laughs> I think the wind stopped for a second. All right, guys, let's do a double rotation with the Ned Foss axe into the wood round. Never use that wood round, so let's uh, throw it and see what it does. Not bad, not bad. Do we dare throw the German axe at it? Urgh. Urgh. We'll do it, fuck it. <laughs> Hit everything but the bullseye. I <laughs> got scared on that one. Not bad. Not bad. They, they fly pretty well. They fly pretty well. I will tell you guys, too, if you throw at wood rounds and you miss and you rotate the handle like over that wood round and catch the middle of the handle on the edge of that wood round, it can toast your handle quick. So be careful throwing at wood rounds because I've broken a many handles just over rotating just a little bit on top of that wood round and that and the middle of the handle hitting the edge it'll snap snap that handle like that i love wood rounds i really do wood rounds are great they're very small target to aim at so you got to be precise or you're going to miss but they're just easy to set up the only thing i don't like about them and you guys have probably experienced this before with wood rounds they split really easily shit here comes the wind again I was blowing over my chairs. Ah! Ah, hit me in the face again! Oh, there goes my chairs! Holy shit, there goes my chairs. <laughs> ah. See what I do for you guys? See what I'm doing out <laughs> here? Uh, storm's getting close. Storm is getting close. But I... I tell you what, I get hit in the face one more time, I'm going to chop that tree down. <laughs> I don't know what's hitting me in the face, but it don't hurt, but it gets my attention. Oh, here goes my chairs. I have to hold the camera so it doesn't fall over. I'm sure it sounds great. Oh no, guys, my freaking... Scandinavian axe that I was going to do the pull in suit all with you guys just fell over onto the uh, fire pit with the stones around it. It's laying on top of the stones. Ugh, shit. Yeah, took some gouges out of it. Fell right on that those stones over there. Look at that. Damn, that's okay. That's okay. We're not really testing the handle for the uh, look of it. We're testing the uh, die on this. So let me go back to throwing and then we'll get to this and then we'll get to the giveaways, okay? So try not to make this thing too long. We'll get to the giveaways soon. Um, I just want to show you guys the axes. We'll do a couple more throws, get to this one, and then I'll do the giveaway. I honestly don't think we have much time left anyway. Damn. Oh! See what I'm saying? <laughs> I love it. I love this stuff, guys. This is this is real raw stuff here. This is real raw video in here. Um, my wife just said we've well, got a tornado tornado watch. So I'm probably gonna throw a couple more times, do this handle and get inside so we can do the giveaways now. <laughs> Let's do a double rotation in the wood target and then a wood round and then we'll come back with a German axe into this target here. How's that sound? Sound like a plan? And into the target here. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Good good throwing axes, good throwing axes. I'm still having a little bit of trouble with that one over there for double rotations. I'm hitting just to the left of the bullseye, um, but I'm not used to that handle, so I gotta work with that a little bit more. But all in all, pretty good throwers. I just filmed that whole uh, throwing part. And when my mic fell over at the beginning of the video, you guys didn't see that. Um, it's got an echo button to make your voice echo. And somehow it got turned all the way up. So that whole video I just shot outside throwing the two axes is echoed. Hopefully in editing I can fix it. It's always something. It really is. It's always something. Uh, the Grand Source Brook that we used the Mohawk dye on, the Mohawk dye stain. I'm going to put some boiled linseed oil on it. I'm going to coat it, let it sit for a minute, and then I'm going to go and see how much transfer we get off of it and see if it's any different than the trans tent dye. 
I'll be honest with you guys and tell you, I don't think this stuff's going to perform much different in the trans tent die. I really don't. That's just my early observations of working with trans tent than working with this stuff. It's almost the same, but you never know until you work on it. So we're going to put some boiled linseed oil on here. We're just going to kind of sling some on. And I'm going to rub it in and see what we get here. I'll be honest with you, if it doesn't work, I'm probably just going to sand it off. Um, because, you know, uh, earlier this handle fell on the wood when the wind was blowing and um, kind of nicked it all up. So, but we'll see here. I'm going to put some on here. Uh, I'm getting some transfer, but you're really going to know when you put it on the paper towel or if you get it wet. I mean... Any dye is going to run when you get it wet if you don't have a ton of oil on the handle. I'm just kind of giving it a coat and just to kind of test it a little bit, initial test, and see what it does here with transfer. So uh, let me put some more on here, let it sit for a little bit, and then I'll come back with a paper towel, wipe it, and we'll see how much uh, transfer we get on there. Okay, so let's see how much transfer we get and see if it's almost similar to the uh, trans tent. Kind of wipe it off a little bit here. Rub it in. It's almost the same as the trans tent dye. It really is. I get the same amount of transfer when I use trans tent. So I thought maybe this stuff would be a little bit more durable. I thought maybe we could try it and see, you know, if it would go on like uh, trans tent, look like trans tent, but be a little bit more durable when it comes to transfer, especially when the handle gets wet or when you put oil on it. And uh, it's transferring the same as trans tent dye. So in order to use that Mohawk, dye stain that I showed in a previous video you're gonna have to do the same thing probably that you do with trans tent which is you're gonna have to lather this thing in boiled linseed oil over and over and over again just to get it from transferring onto your hand and then I can't promise you it's not gonna transfer on your hand when the handle gets wet so uh, we tried it we tried it you know it's still a pretty nice looking finish it is but uh, you're gonna contend with transfer all the time unless you just soak the thing in boiled linseed oil so We'll uh, venture into other stains, other dyes, and see what I can bring you guys and see if I can bring you some more durable dyes or stains or some that don't transfer hardly at all that actually show the wood grain, that don't cover it up. Um, because that's a big thing that I find is that a lot of stains and stuff don't give you the color you're looking for. It gives you a weird color or it just, it's just, it covers up a lot of the handle and covers up a lot of the grain. So trying to find something like trans tint, but has different characteristics with you know transfer and durability so tried it but i'll bring you another one next time hopefully i get something cool soon and i'll bring it to you so now we're back i don't know what kept pelting me in the face something kept hitting me in the face something hit me on the side of the head i don't know what it was it didn't hurt um i assume it was just little twigs and stuff coming off that tree but man it was getting annoying um phone kept falling off the audio was echoing it was just a disaster guys and we ended up having a tornado watch and it just got worse and worse and worse so i stopped filming um but we're back now so giving you my final thoughts i did a full video on the ned foss viking style throwing axe if you haven't seen it you can go back and check it out and you'll see what happens this isn't the original handle that came with it it came with a, a different handle i can't remember the wood that it came with somebody correct me i can't remember what it was um acacia acacia wood that's what it was it came with an acacia wood handle and there's nothing wrong per se with the actual wood it is a little soft the one that they used but it just didn't fit the axe head it, it it came loose after a few throws so keep that in mind if you buy this axe that the handle may come loose fairly quickly and you might want to have a handle on backup to uh, haft it on i will say that i put it on this 17 inch hoffman blacksmithing handle i do like the feel of this 17 inch handle a lot better than the handle that came with it uh, the edge held pretty nicely. Uh, I'm still going to throw these two guys, and I'm going to give you another opinion later on down the road. But so far, the edge on the Ned Foss has held fairly well. I got no chips, no gouges, no edge rollover, as you can see here. Nothing. I got nothing on there. So the edges do hold pretty well on the Ned Foss axes. And, um, you know, they do keep their edge retention pretty decent. 
Um, so all in all, not bad. Uh, just understand that if you do happen to get that axe or this axe, you might have to rehaft a new handle on it. And of course, guys, I showed you the German style throwing axe. I did a video on that one as well. I'll link those videos up up here at the top so you can go to them if you're interested. I did a whole hafting video on this one here. Um, this one held up very nicely. As you guys can tell, if you look at the top here, <laughs> see that splay job? This thing isn't coming loose. There's no way this head's going to come loose. And it hasn't, it hasn't even moved. So this head is hafted extremely well on this handle. And um, I believe this is an older German, I want to say it's either a Prandy or a Still head, an older, I, I can, from like two or three years ago that I had laying around. And sometimes, guys, what I'll do is if I got an old head laying around and I want to rejuvenate and uh, throw an axe, I'll order a new handle for it and some crazy handle or something I've never used and put an old head on it and see how well it throws. And that's exactly what I did with this one. This also is a 17 inch Hoffman blacksmithing handle. It's a tad bit different than this handle. Um, it does kind of curve in. It's okay. I'm not a big fan of handles that curve in like this because I don't want my handle hitting the target when the bit hits. I'd rather have a straight handle or one that kind of goes back a little bit more but I will say it flew very well. I did enjoy this head. Uh, the um, edge on it held pretty decently well. I don't think this was a very expensive axe head, so I don't think I got great tempering on it, but all in all, I don't think I paid a ton of money for it. But I will say that I did transform, at least I feel like I transformed two kind of mediocre axes and put them on better handles and made them better flyers and better uh, axes for throwing. But, um, not bad, not bad at all. You guys will see them in future videos, but I just kind of wanted to go over them again because I made a video on each one of these and said I'd come back to them. Some people were probably really interested in knowing about this one. Like I said, guys, not a, the Ned Foss one's not bad at all. Um, for the money, it's really not that bad. So, uh, you know, I'm going to keep throwing them, see how well they do. If I have any changes to either one of these axes, I'll make sure I come back and tell you, especially the Ned Foss one, because you guys can't really buy this one, but you can buy this one. So I'm going to keep you informed of what's going on with this thing, how it flies, and if anything goes wrong with it, I'll tell you in a future video. These handles did take me a little time to get used to, guys. I'm always throwing different handles. I'll get used to one handle, and then I'll switch over to another handle, and I'll have to get used to that one. So sometimes when I switch up axes, it takes me a little time to get used to the handle again. These here um, did mimic a straight handle, although this one down here does have a slight hook at the bottom, but there are no knobs, and it just kind of is straight all the way down. Like I said, I did have a hook in this one and straight, but once you get versatile and you start getting really good at axe throwing, you can take two different axes like this or two different handles and you can start throwing really fast and you can be accurate with both of them right out of the gate. So that's kind of where I'm at right now is that sometimes I do have to get adjusted a little bit, but I can still hit the target. I just need to hone in my accuracy with handles like this, especially when I'm changing things up. But great handles. Um, I do enjoy them. Like I said in a previous video, I love Hoffman Blacksmith and handles. I really do. I just haven't had the best luck with axe throwing with them. So here's two more we're going to test and I'll let you guys know about the Hoffman Blacksmith and handles and if these hold up as well. So getting into the giveaways. I know you guys have been waiting for these. Wes, give us some axes. Give us some axes. I love giving you guys axes. It's awesome. It's fun for me. And my wife said I need to get rid of some of them because I got too many. Never have too many axes. However, uh, we're going to give these away. I told you guys in a previous video when I did a review on these, I'll link that at the top. If I can do more than one link, I'll do it. If not, just go back and check it out. You'll see the thumbnail for these. These aren't bad at all either, guys. These are pretty decent for the money. You get them as a pair. Um, I did have this one come loose. Um, this one held very well. And you have seen probably some shorts from last week or the week prior. I made some shorts with these again. Um, this one's still holding up. I haven't had any movement. I haven't fixed this one yet. This one's still moving a little bit. I can still throw it, but it is moving. But I do plan on rehafting this head before it comes to one of you. Uh, so don't worry. I'm going to make it nice and tight so it doesn't come loose. Uh, when you get it, you can throw it. 
all in all guys these things aren't bad i've been throwing them pretty regularly from months and months and months ago when i got them this one even though it's loose is still holding on it's still a little loose but the edge retention on them guys is really nice they do have a pretty decent polish on them when they come to you the only thing that i'll say about these axes that i didn't care for was the bit they have really 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 fat cheeks on them so i will say that i did notice that when i started throwing them and hitting the target i would get a a good stick and a good hit but they would kind of wobble sometimes and they'd wobble back out and if you guys have axes that you're throwing and you notice that maybe when you go to throw it you're hitting it clean you see the bit hit the target but it kind of does a wobble out it could be because your cheeks and your bit are way too fat or the angle is too steep for sticking for throwing axes so check that bit and see if your cheeks are a little fat <laughs> And, and, and your bit. <laughs> I hate saying it. Every time I say that, I laugh. I, I, I got to keep it in. Just check to see if the degree on your bit is way too steep. You might have to thin it down a little bit. And you should get sticking again. So if you want to win these axe, go down in the comment section. And we're going to see who actually watches the videos. And instead of writing axe in this one, I want you guys to write Ned Foss. N-E-D-F-O-S-S. One comment per person, you must be subscribed to me. I need you to write Ned Foss, and then I need you to write period, and then whatever comment you want to make after that, do so. But write Ned Foss first. If you write Axe, I'm not entering into the giveaway. I'm not entering you in. You have to write Ned Foss, and we'll see who watches the actual video and who just sees free giveaway and writes Axe in the comments section. And we'll let this thing run for about two weeks. I normally let it run for five days, but I'm going to make sure that everybody gets in on these. We'll let it run for two weeks. So today's Friday, so we'll let it run till not next Friday, but the Friday after. I'll close it off at that point, and then I'll make a video, and I'll announce the winners in that video. Now, here's the deal with the giveaway on these. I am not going to allow somebody to win both of these. Sorry. So what we're going to do is, is that when I, when I go to pick the winners, if there's 23 of you, and somebody wins, I'm going to redo the wheel with 22 spots and take that person out for the second axe, okay? Because I want two people to win. I want, you know, I want each one of these axes to go to a different person. So we're going to have two winners in this one. So that's it. I appreciate everybody's support. I appreciate everything everybody does to make this channel what it is. Commenting, emails, uh, liking the video everything that you guys do to push me ahead i really do enjoy that i hope you enjoyed the beginning of the video of a more personal look at my behind the scenes filming area um, i do want to make more personal videos on this channel i do want to make things personal on this channel um, i think that's important so it's not just me sitting in front of the camera like a robot talking about axes all the time so i do plan on doing some personal stuff on here so and i enjoy the uh, camaraderie and and the talking and hearing about your guys' stories about different things and axes and all that. So I do enjoy that part. We're almost up to 3,000 subscribers, which is really cool. I'm not setting an unrealistic goal for myself, but I have said that I would like to be at 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That's my goal for this year. 5, 000, by the end of the year, I want to be at 5,000 subscribers. So if you guys can help me out with that, that'd be cool. If not, um, you know, I got a bunch of you guys here and I'll be honest with you, I really have gotten everything that I've really wanted. I think 3, 000, almost 3,000 of you is great. So if I get more, that's even better. Um, so, But that's my goal. I, I feel like having goals in this keeps me moving keeps me going keeps me trying to innovate keeps me bringing you guys new and informative stuff and it just helps me out when i learn more and bring it to you or share things that i know with you guys and it just it resonates with a lot of you which i do appreciate i know this is a very small niche thing axe throwing and axes and there's not a ton of people out there that really care about axe throwing but uh, you know 20,000 plus on TikTok and almost 3,000 on YouTube, I'd say that's a pretty daggone good number for throwing axes. So it's all on you. It's all because of you guys. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate everything everybody does. I really do. And I, I don't know what else to do other than to keep giving you guys giveaways as a way to say thank you and just to thank you on almost every video. So Thanks for your help. Thanks for your support. Let's try to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I'm sure Dave's going to be online. If you guys haven't seen it, I'm not doing it. I'm not controlling him. There, He is on uh, line. He is in the comment section writing stuff, and I, it's not me. Okay, it's not me. I will say that. It is not me. 
I don't know how he's doing it. He doesn't have arms, but he's doing it. Care to tell people how you're commenting, Dave? No, he's going to be silent on this one. But anyway, guys, thanks for all your support. I can't wait to make the next video. Come back and watch the next review. Actually, I'm about to film it when I put these down. I'm going to go ahead and film it outside because it's beautiful. You guys should enjoy this one. I think you'll love it. I know that I think I will love it, if that makes sense. I think it does. I know I'll love it, I think, hopefully. But we'll see. Thanks for your support. But until next time, guys, see ya.